Hello and welcome to the Spring 2021 Digital Program Series presented by the Cory Higher Education Council. Today's presentation is titled Erie to Pittsburgh and Local Trails. My name is Brody Howard. I am the Executive Director of the Cory Higher Education Council and will be your host for today's program. You may have heard about Cory's Rails to Trails project, but what is it? Where does the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail originate and where is it located? Today, our guest, Ashley Lawson, Blue Zones Public Policy Advocate, will provide an overview of our local trail system network, discuss its overall benefits to the community, and reveal the current work being completed to enhance the trails. Welcome to the program, Ashley. Thank you for being here today to share information about great recreational opportunities right in our own backyard. Thanks, Brody. Thanks to both you and the High Ed for having me. Uh, we are always delighted to share information about trails and help to spread the word not only about how they contribute to wellness and well being in our neighborhoods, but also how they contribute to economic development and regional vitality. I am really excited to talk today about the larger Rails to Trails movement, how that plays out here in Cory and the development of several new plans and initiatives to expand the trail network here in Cory to help uh, re-energize, revitalize, and just contribute to our region and also give people more knowledge and opportunities to get outside. So I'm gonna begin by talking about rails to trails generally, and then we'll kind of narrow things down as we move forward. And in the end, we'll talk a little bit about opportunities on how to get more involved and how to experience the trails here in Cory. So back in the mid 1980s, the Rails to Trails Conservancy uh, developed as a national organization. So Rails to Trails was founded by, you know, concerned citizens who were also avid outdoor recreation enthusiasts. So cyclists, walkers, bikers, runners, however you want to look at it. Um, but now they actually are a group of more than a million grassroots supporters working on trail systems all across the United States. Um, so Rails to Trails in the last 40-ish years now, right, has grown from that group to a million people who are now supporting almost 25,000 miles of trails across the United States. Uh, the majority of these trails are reclaimed or repurposed railroad beds. And why railroad beds work great for trails is because they are designed specifically to be, you know, as flat as possible. There are no sudden inclines or declines if we think about, you know, how a train best runs across tracks. And so back when the railroads were developed, they were developed to connect virtually every part of the United States to everywhere else. And so the trains reached their peak um, actually up until the 1950s, really. And so after that, uh, we saw a decline in train usage, but these railroad beds were all still there. And it took about 30 years for the idea to come about, but some of them began to be converted into these uh, rail to trail paths here, uh, like we have in Cory. Uh, in Cory, there is about a six mile branch of the trail, which heads kind of from right and really six and center there, but heads all the way up to Clymer, New York. So how does that fit into the larger perspective is something we'll talk about later, but uh, you know, talking a little bit more about Rails to Trails generally, they are realistically advocates who uh, let people know how important trails are to communities. They mobilize, they create events, um, they partner with local and regional organizations and chapters of Rails to Trails to create a bigger movement. So here in Cory, our trails are supported by uh, two organizations in addition to kind of the larger Rails to Trails family. Here we are part of the Northwest Pennsylvania Trail Association and our trails are actually maintained by the Tri-County Snowblazers. So huge shout out to uh, those guys and gals who do a fabulous job of keeping our trails clean and safe. You may have noticed a couple weeks ago that uh, Tri-County Snowblazers, Blue Zones Project, and the Northwest PA Trails Association organized a spring cleanup. So they do those in spring and in fall. Um, but as part of the larger organization, Rails to Trails also provides a lot of resources and 
technical assistance to communities further looking to develop their trail organizations. And then they do a lot of work with protecting trails. Um, a lot of people don't recognize how important trails are to a community, but Rails to Trails also advocates for the transformative power of trails. We think about transit uh, a lot in Northwest Pennsylvania, or even with just within the United States as getting in our car and driving somewhere. But realistically, if we think about interconnectedness, um, trails are something that are equally accessible by all individuals. Uh, and they may just provide a source of recreation, but for a lot of people, it is a more convenient or more pleasant way to get to work, right? Um, in terms of economics, it is most cost effective to hop on a bike or to be able to walk to work or school or you know to an organization or a location we're going to go shopping at or just to spend time with others outside um, so these trails really become multi-purpose corridors um, and since rail to trail beds are kind of gentle slopes and mostly flat, they're also great for people of all ages. So the purpose of rails to trails, they say their trails are for individuals eight to 80. So really anyone who wants to get out there and spend time on trails, they look to, you know, service. These types of trails benefit those who are not only walking and biking, but also wheelchair users. People uh, in our region use them often for cross-country skiing or horseback riding or snowmobiling in the winter months, uh, snowshoeing. So knowing that these really become year-round places for activity. So in 1986, Rails to Trails opened their doors to reclaim uh, some of these paths to create a recreational space for individuals outdoors. So they advocate for policy and trail friendly policies, but they are also developing some really great plans and trail paths uh, that will link all the way across the United States. So right now, uh, they don't just work on rural trails like you see here in Cory, but they also work on trails that you know travel through suburbs or larger cities. If you think, um, you know, we'll talk in a little bit about the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail and how the Cory Junction Greenway Trail falls into that. Um, you know, you're linking these cities along these really vibrant corridors, and part of what that happens is is you're also creating these more vibrant urban networks that also traverse people through smaller, more rural communities. So one of the greatest projects uh, Rails to Trails is working on right now on a national scale is the, the Great American Rail Trail. And this project is definitely their most ambitious. It is a 3,700 mile trail uh, between the state of Washington and Washington, DC. So once this project is finished, you will be able to walk or ride a bike or recreate however you want to all the way across the United States. And that's so amazing because you just don't think about the ability to get out there and spend that much time on the trails. But one thing that is really important and we're really recognizing after COVID is that the number of people who want and desire access to a trail in their neighborhood um, is so important to people. We saw such a dramatic increase in trail usage, even just here in Cory uh, during the COVID pandemic our summer usage was up about 700% on the trails and our winter usage was up uh, close to 2000%. So people were really taking advantage of getting outdoors and spending time on the trails with their family or friends in a safe manner where they could physically distance from each other, but they were also using this to supplement maybe because their gym was closed or they were able to work from home and they were able to get out and spend more time with family and friends. Um, but, so let's talk a little bit about economic development and the benefits of trails in that way. I think the physical benefit of trails and the well-being benefit of trails is really obvious. Um, but one of the things that I think doesn't get as much highlight as it should is there is a multi-billion dollar industry surrounding uh, outdoor recreation. And a huge part of that in recent years has actually been uh, long distance cycling. So when you think about going on a vacation, um, you know, you pick a destination and you wanna go there and you fly there or you drive there. Um, 
and you spend your money in the location you're traveling to and then you come home. But if you look at long distance cycling, uh, if you are riding a bike from Erie to Pittsburgh, for example, along the Erie to Pittsburgh trail, um, you're going to have to stop more than one night. And so you're traveling through much smaller towns than if you're driving your car from Erie to Pittsburgh and you're getting there in a shot of two hours. So people who recreate or uh, take bicycle vacations actually spend significantly more money uh, along their vacation in smaller towns, right? So trails have uh, boosted the spending at local businesses along trails. Um, trail towns uh, kind of benefit from this influx of visitors, right? You think about bed and breakfasts or restaurants, you know, any kind of retail establishment that's located along there, they're really seeing a huge benefit from these trails. Um, trails also make communities a more vibrant and a more desirable place to live. As younger generations are becoming more upwardly mobile and after the COVID pandemic, we're seeing individuals who have a greater choice in living where they want to live because they're able to work remote versus living where they work, right? So we no longer need to think as much about a commute maybe as we do, you know, what is the most bang for my buck? What can I do in a community that is important to me? You know, people thrive on the outdoors and being able to spend time in nature. So they're looking for very different assets in homes than they were maybe even looking at just a few years ago. But trails undoubtedly make uh, communities more attractive places to live and they increase property values when you're located uh, near trails. And if you think about when large scale businesses are thinking about relocating or opening a second branch or expanding, things like that, they're not just looking at tax breaks. They're also considering what their employees um, want and are looking for. So if you use Seattle, for example, and Amazon, right, gigantic company, but Amazon understands that their employees want to live near trails. Um, Washington has an amazing trail network and Amazon contributes to that because they understand that having access to those trails is something that is going to help them recruit and retain employees. So when companies on that scale look to build new facilities, they are looking for these outdoor recreation opportunities that maybe we take for granted here. Um, because we have grown up with or always had access to places like the Quarry Junction Greenway Trail. Um, so trails also help employers reduce medical costs. When people are able to get out and get outside, uh, they're healthier, they're more productive, and then that in turn is more lucrative for a business while benefiting the employee on both a health and, and mental health level. So Trails can also help revitalize uh, depressed areas because they're creating a demand for new businesses or businesses that help support trails. So for an example, here in Cory, if you think about the Old Ritz Chocolate Building, that is directly across the street from, from a trailhead. So there is a great opportunity in that facility to create maybe a bike shop or a snack shop or something that would cater to people who are traversing the trail and maybe in need of amenities or, you know, looking to just stop and relax for a minute and take in the quarry community. So as we think about the ability to fill kind of vacant businesses and uh, remediate some blighted buildings, we also know that that is so important to our community as we think about revitalization and economic development. Um, so as Younger people move into communities. We recognize that environmental impact is something that is becoming more and more important to a lot of people. So individuals enjoy the ability to commute in what they see as a more eco-friendly way, right? Riding a bike or walking, or even you know taking public transportation and then finishing your commute via trail is not only eco-friendly, but it's also very wallet-friendly. So if you're thinking about how you can save some money, certainly walking from one location to another um, is very important. And so to continue off that, you also have to think, you know, trails are a low, low, low to really no cost uh, recreation opportunity for families. So 
they are there and accessible for everyone. Um, but then they're also returning money to the community through uh, continued economic investment. So uh, those business owners are going to see a huge increase in the investment that they're putting into their uh, businesses alongside trails. Um, if you think about Pennsylvania alone, there are statistics that say one quarter of businesses along the trails um, note that they have either expanded or had plans to expand uh, or increase their staff just because of their proximity to trails. So that's something, you know, it's worth considering when you're looking at why these trails are so important. So just in the state of Pennsylvania, um, between 2007 and 2008, a trail community outside of Pittsburgh was studied um, and they received about $23 million in revenue to their community just from uh, users of their trail. But that returned uh, $4 million in wages, right, to employees of these trail-based businesses. So, uh, you know, the accessibility of these outdoor spaces is really something that connects a community and, and contributes to community well-being. So around here, uh, you can see Cory kind of in this little map segment here where we talk about the Cory Junction Greenway Trail. And one of the things we're working on locally um, has been this Rails to Trails master plan. So Rails to Trails Cory, the Pennsylvania Environmental Council and the Industrial Heartlands Trail Coalition came together to create this uh, regional plan to leverage some grant funding and create a sense of unity throughout the region in terms of trails. So the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail um, was originally conceived as a way I think their tagline was connecting one great lake with three great rivers or something along those lines. And the idea is that once this trail is all the way connected, you will be able to ride your bicycle from Erie, Pennsylvania, right, to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and so this master plan really emphasized both that economic vitality and the physical health of the region. So that was used to leverage some grant funding and Erie County received $1.5 million to contribute to just trail growth in, in Erie County alone. And so some of that money is coming to Cory. So right now you can see that the uh, Erie to Pittsburgh Trail, which this is mostly a map of, loops up through Chautauqua, New York, which is great. And Chautauqua, we all know is a beautiful place, but recently Erie County has uh, put in some funding requests or is looking at actually continuing the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail more directly through Cory and into the city of Erie. So Connecting that through Erie County is really going to contribute a lot of money economically to not just Cory, but smaller boroughs, Union City and Wattsburg, Waterford, and those, those littler communities who are right now missing out. Um, and so that study for the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail would loop this back through Erie County and really contribute more to rural growth in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, where if you think about a lot of these regions are former manufacturing hubs or have lost jobs maybe in the coal or steel industries, they could then be replaced with different kinds of jobs um, with people building new trails or building trail amenities um, and opening businesses to support trail development. So that will contribute positively to uh, Erie County is kind of recreational development, right? Um, and we can then leverage that to create a larger network of trails. So if you think about uh, trails as a whole, it's, it's a kind of common correlation that for every one mile of trail you have, you draw in visitors from 10 miles away. So if you have a one mile long trail, your circle of influence is about 10 miles. So Cory Junction Greenway Trail right now is six miles. So we can guesstimate that we are drawing individuals from about a 60 mile radius. Um, this plan looks to expand that to 10 miles of trail, which would give us a 100 mile sphere of influence. So all of a sudden now people are coming up for even day rides from Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Cleveland, 
those kind of regions and they're spending money in our community while they're here and they're bringing their families here. So um, Corey is also looking to expand trails locally. We are looking at through both the active transportation plan uh, designed by Blue Zones and the community and uh, with the help of Pashek and MTR out of Pittsburgh through the WalkWorks grant and also uh, through Impact Quarry Strategic Plan, we are looking to leverage and connect some more local assets. In addition to our six mile trail, not many communities also have a 40 plus acre recreational uh, green space park like we do in terms of Mead Park here in Quarry. Um, but we also have more beautiful and accessible regions that we would love to create some spurs off of the trail. So moving forward, we are looking to create some bike lanes along Center Street to really continue uh, the Erie to Pittsburgh trail down to the form formal trailhead in the old rail bed, but also connect people to Mead Park and the YMCA and create a loop around North Hills Golf Course so that there is more and additional mileage just not only for cyclists and people traveling through the region, but for also local people. And we want to connect people to the places they want to go. We have so many uh, beautiful outdoor assets in the Cory community that making them more accessible via foot is really a highlight that we should think about. If you want to get out and go for a walk or a cross country ski or even a snowmobile ride, you know, being able to see something different and being able to take a advantage of different parts of the community as we move forward are really all things that not only Blue Zones Project, but also Impact Cory, uh, the city of Cory, and really even Erie County planning are taking advantage of and looking to expand to develop uh, for residents, but also for visitors alike. So as we move forward in all of these plans, we want to be there and have as many people contribute their opinions as possible and take advantage of these trails now that they know more about what rails to trails are, how it fits into the larger picture of, you know, the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail and some more regional areas, but also here in Cory. So um, if you are interested in learning more, Saturday, April 24th is a great opportunity. Um, we will be celebrating Celebrate Trails Day. Celebrate Trails Day is a national outdoor holiday, um, and it really marks the beginning of trails and outdoor season for most locations. Um, Blue Zones Project has partnered with Cory Young Professionals and the Impact Cory Parks and Green Space Committee, uh, the Northwest PA Trail Association, and the Tri-County Snowblazers to host uh, our first ever celebrate Trails Day on Saturday the 24th. So get out there, enjoy some family-friendly activities, enter to win a lot of prizes, um, learn more about our trails and the assets that we have here in the community. Um, last year we featured Trail Tuesdays on Blue Zones Project Facebook and we were really excited to see how many people were taking advantage of the trails and we really want to celebrate these assets that we have outdoor here in the Cory community. Um, so lots of things to do and to experience. But then if you have any other questions that, or you can't make it on Saturday, my contact information is always available and I can do my best to educate anyone on trails or to talk more about opportunities or to clarify what the future of trails looks like not just for Quarry, but for Erie County and the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail in general. Thank you, Ashley. We really appreciate you joining us today to talk about these uh, opportunities here uh, through the trails and the future of the trails and what that will bring to Quarry. Thanks, Brody. Anytime, we'd be glad to come back and touch on anything else people are interested in. Thanks for having us.